So there is a lot of misinformation out there from Fox News to CNN to the internet to whatever. There's a lot of misinformation out there. So what we're gonna do today is we're going to break down and bust seven myths in all of this commission hubbub. Number one, commissions are always negotiable and always have been. The settlement does not force agents to cut fees. Commissions have always been negotiable and sellers always have the option to hire an attorney, hire a discount brokerage, or even sell the home themselves. But usually people want somebody that offers value, expertise, knowledge, to sell one of the biggest financial assets that they have. Would you go and hire a financial advisor because they were less expensive? I wouldn't. I would hire the best financial advisor that I could find and I would pay them properly for their expertise. Experienced agents provide reassurance in complicated markets. Myth two. Buyers will still be able to negotiate sellers to cover their fees. Everybody's thinking now the buyer has to pay their agent for commission. Not necessarily true. Absolutely not the real. This is all negotiable. While the settlement restricts offers in the MLS from saying we offer the buyer's agent 2.5%, the buyers can still negotiate for the sellers to pay their agent. The seller can also offer to the buyer's agent that they still want to offer them compensation. It can't be listed in the MLS, but it can be listed on private websites. It can be listed in marketing materials. Seller can still absolutely pay for the buyer's agent's fee. So buyers still have the right to structure their offer the way they want. Buyers can still say as part of their offer that the seller is to compensate the buyer's agent for their commission fee. Totally an option. Now the really interesting thing here though is that having and pay, the seller paying a buyer's agent has an advantage. And I'm gonna read you a really cool stat. So this is from Washington DC, Maryland, and Virginia. If the buyer's agent was offered 2.5% commission and under, the house spent an average of 46 days on market. It sold for 94% of the list price, and the average sold price was 1.205. If the commission offered to the buyer's agent was 2.5%, it spent 31 days on market, it sold for 99.02% of the list price, and it sold for an average of $1.23 million. Now, if the commission offered to the buyer's agent was 2.5% or higher, 21 days on the market, 99.98% of the listing price, and an average sold price of 1.246. You do the math. Myth number three. Impact on home prices will be extravagant. No, impact on home prices is going to be minimal. The settlement is unlikely to impact home prices as it represents 2%, 3% of the entire transaction. What provides our value in real estate is supply and demand. And here we have very little supply and we have high demand. Myth number four is that this is bad for buyers because now they have to pay their own agent. Nonsense. This is actually a good thing for buyers. Number one, how many buyers bought, an, bought or met an agent at an open house and decided, oh, they're my agent. They were at the open house, right? Whereas sellers interview their listing agent. They get to know them. They get a marketing presentation. They understand who the person is that's going to be selling their house. Great. Interview me as your buyer's agent. Know how I'm going to fight for you. That is a win for buyers. Myth number five. Now buyers have to pay all their own fees. Not true. We talked about this. It's all how you structure the offer. Yes. Will you have to sign a buyer broker agreement that states if the listing side doesn't pay you that you need to compensate your buyer's agent for the time and the expertise that they've provided to you? Yes, absolutely. But 
it's more than likely that you will negotiate with the seller for them to cover the cost. Here's another really interesting point that I like to bring up. If I'm a seller and I'm talking to my seller and they say, oh, but now I'm not going to have to pay the buyer's agent the $50,000 I would have to pay them. Well, guess what? That buyer is now paying their agent $50,000. So now they're going to have $50,000 less dollars to pay you. So most likely the price of your house has to come down in order for the buyer's agent to pay their, or the buyer to pay the buyer's agent. Now the issue with this is when a buyer is going to purchase your home, they can get a loan on that, right? They can't get a loan to pay for that compensation. So it's very likely that the seller will take less money than if they actually offer compensation to the buyer's agent. Myth number six, the sellers are going to pay less in fees and therefore make more money. Well, we discussed this just a second ago, but let's talk about the other things. Buyers will always want to know now what percentage is being offered to their agent because they're going to have to come up with the other amount if the seller is not offering that. That's going to take time. That's going to create insecurity. We all know that it is really important the first couple weeks that a house is on the market to create that momentum. So if buyers are feeling insecure and having to search for how much their agent is going to be paid and how much they're going to not be able to finance, you're going to have this lull and then the house is going to sit and it's going to be tainted and the seller would probably be better off just paying the buyer's agent commission and getting a higher price and keeping that momentum. So it is absolutely a myth that the sellers are going to be putting more money in their pocket. Myth number seven is that sellers are being compensated for how they were taken advantage of. BS. The sellers that were affected by agents that may have misrepresented are getting on average a hundred dollars while the attorneys, are making all the money. In the Bay Area, we have a lot of sophisticated people that are smart, that are educated, that want professional help. And I simply don't see sellers or buyers wanting to change the way the dynamic is today. I say to my sellers, do you wanna be the first one to try this experiment? To see how it works by not compensating the professional that brings you an educated buyer that can monitor the bumpy waters in this market and that brings you a fantastic offer, do you want to try to be the first one not to compensate them appropriately? My sellers all say no. My sellers want to continue to offer the buyer's agent every penny that they've worked for to bring the fantastic offer. The bottom line is that real estate agents are independent contractors and they can set their own fees, just like an attorney, just like a CPA. Example, my CPA, I pay him the top of anybody that I've ever paid in terms of a CPA. But you can go to H&R Block, which I actually tried to do for one of my tax returns this year, and let me tell you about the shit show that it brought. I ended up having H&R Block refund the entire thing and brought that one return right back to my CPA. Is he expensive? Yes. Is he absolutely fantastic at his job? Yes. Does he end up saving me money in the end? Yes. Here's the deal. Choices are great. There's something for everybody. I'm not saying that everybody has to have the same type of representation. But what I'm saying is if you want a professional experience, just like you expect from your CPA, from your financial advisor, from your attorney, hire somebody that you trust in, you believe in, and you know has the knowledge to navigate this market for you. Feels like a fan.